It's been 45 days since planting the Moringa seeds in this raised bed, and it's been nearly 30 days uh, since our last update, so we're definitely due uh, for an update to see how uh, the Moringa is doing. Uh, over the last 30 days, we've had some fairly varied temperatures. We've had daytime highs for a period of a week uh, in the low 60s, and then on another week, we've had uh, daytime highs in the low 90s. Uh, at nighttime, uh, we've seen temperatures again drop down into the 50s uh, and sometimes stay in the low 60s. So, uh, that being said, we've kept the row covers on nearly all the time. Uh, on the warmer days, I've been taking the cover off from about 10 o'clock uh, mid-morning to uh, mid-afternoon, say 2, 2.30. As far as watering is concerned in this bed, I've been running these uh, sprinklers for about five minutes a day. Between the 20 sprinklers that are installed, that works out to about 10 gallons uh, a day. And I know that's more than necessary at this point, but uh, I want to be safe and establish some sort of a baseline. Um, I have just installed a control valve and timer for this bed, and so we're gonna start being a little more accurate and precise with the water requirements and trying to determine exactly uh, what the Moringa need. As I mentioned in my last post on the website, uh, out of the 282 seeds that were originally planted in this bed, 190 of them germinated. But I really wanted all four of these sections to be filled out to their full plant density, so uh, as I mentioned previously, I did go ahead and replant on day 24 uh, the second round of planting to fill in all the gaps that existed in this bed. Uh, on day 35, I spread compost on this half of the raised bed, right uh, down all four sections. And I wanted to do that as well for a test to see if this soil, the base soil, was rich enough or whether the compost, uh, which was um, composted cow manure from a local organic dairy farm, I wanted to see if that enriched the soil enough to make a substantial difference in the growth. We've collected two full sets of data on all seedlings in this bed. Uh, one on day 27 and the second set of data on day 41. Uh, I also took a full set of data just on the seedlings in section 1 right here and that was done on day 35, the same day I put the, uh, the composted manure on the bed. So that's an overview of what I've been doing in this bed over the last 30 days. Uh, but let's take a look and see what the Moringa has been doing. So of the 92 seeds that were planted, uh, we had uh, 81 of those seeds germinate. Coincidentally, that is an 88% germination rate and the same germination rate we had in our first planting for our control group of seeds. While most of the seedlings are doing quite well, uh, we did have three seedlings that died. Uh, they were all in section three and they were all in close proximity to each other. Uh, at this point it would just be guessing to give you a reason as to why they died, but I did want to point out we did have three seedlings out of all the ones planted uh, die when they were just a few inches tall. A few other observations uh, in this bed. Uh, a few of the seeds that germinated later uh, came up with two stems. And uh, some of these seedlings took almost twice as long to germinate and to emerge as their single stem siblings. Additionally, some of the seedlings that uh, emerged had a second stem emerge days to even weeks later uh, that came up alongside of the first stem. When the plants are stressed, the lower leaves seem to show it first. Uh, you may see a yellowing of the leaves or the leaves may wilt and die. Uh, and this could be due to temperature or to um, irrigation or watering requirements, uh, among other things. In this case, I think because it's still too cold really to be planting Moringa, uh, I think that the lower leaf stress that we're seeing is being caused uh, by a colder than ideal temperature. Now let's talk about average uh, plant height and stem diameters. Uh, certainly in the tropics these trees 
would grow faster if well irrigated than they are here. Uh, but that being said, under these conditions, I want to share with you what I'm seeing and how these trees are doing. So on day 27, when we took the first set of data, uh, the tallest tree in the bed actually was this little seedling right here. And uh, it measured six and a half inches tall. That equates to um, about a third of an inch of day of growth as it germinated on day seven. Uh, now the average height of the plants in the, uh, in the bed was much lower. The average was actually 3.1 inches. Uh, and that equates to about a sixth of an inch of day of growth. Um, a third of an inch a day equates to about 10 feet a year and a sixth of an inch a day equates to about five feet a year. So that just gives you an idea of what we're seeing. As far as stem diameters are concerned, uh, the largest diameter that we measured in this bed on day 27 was 0.15 inches. Uh, the average stem diameter was 0 0.105 inches. And it's interesting to note that the seedlings, when they first emerge, have nearly the same stem diameter that I recorded on day 27. So uh, a few conclusions to draw there, I'll share more of uh, that with you in the post on the website, um, but I wanted to share those initial findings with you. For the stem diameters and plant heights that we measured on day 41, and for the complete data set from this bed, uh, go to the website, ahealthyleaf.com. And if you have any questions or comments, if you've ever done an intensive Moringa cultivation before, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment or connect with me on the website. And once again, uh, thanks for watching.